New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton has been labeled as a champion of community, of community policing. And part of his focus during his second stint here in New York City has been to heal the rift between the police department and minority communities they serve. That goal is becoming increasingly challenging in the aftermath of the death of Eric Garner and the recent slaying of two policemen in Brooklyn. Connie Rice is a civil rights attorney and the co-founder of the Advancement Project. She's worked closely with Commissioner Bratton when he headed the LAPD. She joins us now uh, from Los Angeles. Uh, Ms. Rice, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule and your holiday schedule to join us. Um, let's get right to it. You work hand in hand, or you at least had a front row seat to how Bill Bratton was able to transform a particularly hostile relationship between the LAPD and the community. What were some of his challenges there? Oh, they were huge because the black community in particular was at war with LAPD and he had to come in in the middle of that war, declare a ceasefire and then do the very hard work of knitting together a coalition of folks who could break down the old barriers and create new glue between the community and the police. It was very hard to do, but he did it. One of the tenets of that would have to be trust. Can you single out any particular initiatives or programs uh, that he used to re-engage the trust of the community? Well, you're absolutely right on that point. It's called public trust policing because trust is the currency. And Chief Bratton started with his own persona. He basically met with all the black leaders, met with regular street folks. He was constantly in the black community talking, communing, listening, and that was his beginning. Then he started with the police and told them, you have got to learn to talk to the community like you are serving them which was a big change from a militaristic occupation style policing. And that's how he began it. Now, Bill Bratton has a challenge in, in, in at least engaging his own rack and file here in New York. Was there a particular piece of that that you saw him resolve with the LAPD and those officers there? Oh yes, LAPD did not want an outside chief. They did not accept him as their chief at first. And so he had to overcome that. Uh, he doesn't even have to overcome that level of opposition within NYPD right now. Um, he's been welcomed back as a, as a welcome chief. So he's actually got an easier start with his cops here in some ways than he did with LAPD, to tell you the truth. Uh, the hardest part of this is going to be knitting together the mayor and the rank and file first. Then they've got to go to the community as a united front and say, look, we're going to start over. We're going to get a new relationship with you, and it's going to be built on service and trust. And then you've got to start demonstrating incident by incident, day to day, every single day, engaging in conversation. It's a very slow process, but you can see the trust building up over time, and you'll know you're there when the police and the community hit their first shooting that's controversial and you see how the community reacts. Are they in the street protesting or are they waiting on the police to conduct their investigation? When you see that, you know you've got something. The particulars of the police union and the dynamics of a police union here in New York, which is, um, has a history of railing against on um, whatever mayor happens to be in office. It doesn't really matter who it is. We go all the way back to David Dinkins in 1992. The police led a riot in this town um, against then Mayor David Dinkins. And then Rudy Giuliani came in and brought in Mr. Bratton. And I, as I remember, Mr. Bratton did have a very, he was part of the Giuliani steamroll to bring down crime in the city. You mentioned before a change in his personality. Is, was he a different person when he left the LAPD than when he, when he, when he arrived? I don't think so, no. Bratton wasn't any different. Mm -hmm. um, but you're absolutely right on the point that the police unions are probably the most regressive and repressive elements in this entire tableau of characters. I always find the police unions the most difficult, the most unreasonable, and the most strident players in this whole tableau. 
So you, I'm not surprised. I think their behavior has been outrageous in the last few days to blame the president and to blame the mayor for some nut shooting two officers. That's just completely out of bounds and ridiculous. And it's to be expected from union leadership, I'm afraid. Police union leadership leaves a lot to be desired, and they are usually the biggest roadblock to trust that, and in any of this. Uh, it's, it's sad to say, but I found it to be true. Over the last year, we have seen these police incidents play out across the country. These are stories that have made international headlines. And you're a civil rights attorney. You've been doing this a while. Um, how do you think this uh, portrays America in the Western world, the same America that is trying to es espouse itself as a democratic center and, and, pr and propagating this ideal throughout the, throughout the globe? I think the saving grace for us is that I think we're humble enough to admit that we haven't got it all right. Um, I hope the rest of the world sees that side of us. But if they don't, they should, because we have a long way to go in this country. We have come a long way, and we have a long way to go. So you're absolutely right. Um, we have a lot of nerve telling other people uh, we're the beacon of democracy when our democracy doesn't extend to poor blacks and poor Latinos and poor whites. Uh, our policing does not afford those populations access to justice. And there is no democracy without justice. Well, as you see these uh, incidents and the protests unfold here in New York and you watch um, from Los Angeles and you see the differences and you see the similarities, um, what would be your message to people of color uh, in the New York area who have seen the work, um, who have, this is the second coming of Bill Bratton, but who haven't seen uh, the direct transformation face to face that you experienced in LA? What would you say to those communities here? I would say to those communities, give him a chance because the, the black community in LA also told Bratton to leave. They, they did not want him at first and they rejected him. And Bratton just kept working at it every single day, personality by personality, relationship by relationship, and he built up enough relationships that people started to give him a chance to show that he knew how to deliver safety and trust. Trust with your police and trust with your police brass, your leaders. And so he had to push hard. There were closed doors. So if New York's communities are going to shut the door on Bratton, let them know Bratton's not going to give up but that they ought to try opening the door and giving him a chance because it takes two to tango. The community played just as important a role mm -hmm. in the turnaround of the police as the police did. Mm -hmm. It took both camps together. Ms. Rice, um, we have about 30 seconds left. Um, in the coverage of this crisis in America, uh, what is it that makes you the most crazy when you see it on television? The police unions, I think they are so out of bounds. That does drive me crazy. Um, I'm not at all, I'm very, very hopeful because of what happened in LA. Right now in LA, public housing populations trust the police, mm -hmm. which is an extraordinary thing to say. Okay, thank you so much. Civil rights attorney, Connie Rice, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us today on this very important topic. You're most welcome. And this is Arise America.